faster, stronger, bigger. Make them bigger. All over the world, people are crazy about SUVs. Cars have always been used as a status signifier. But just as great as the feeling of driving around in a flashy beast are the problems that they cause. And they hold up the entire traffic the moment they're trying to maneuver. So let's get into gear and check what's behind the hype. Why is the world so obsessed with SUVs? Forty percent of all passenger vehicles sold worldwide are some form of SUV. That's more than twice as much as just 10 years ago. It is a global trend. In India and the EU, one in three new vehicles is an SUV. In China, it's even more, and in the US, it's almost one in two. From a producer's perspective, it makes a lot of sense to produce SUVs or cars that look like SUVs because they're able to extract higher margins, higher profit margins from them. It will be not much more expensive to produce, uh, to manufacture, but uh, they will be able to sell it at like prices like 40-50% higher. So car companies profit from the SUV hype. But that's only one side of the story. Because they wouldn't build them if people wouldn't buy them like crazy. If you put a machine gun on the top of the SUV, you might sell it better. That is Clotaire Rapai, aka the car shrink. When the SUV boom started in the US, he helped major car companies sell more of them as a marketing consultant. And if you ask him, the secret as to why people are so attracted to SUVs is rooted in our brain. To put it very, very simply, our brain is made up of three different brains the cortex, the limbic system, and the reptilian brain. They constantly talk to each other, but each of them has a different job. The cortex is responsible for rational thinking. It helps us make decisions, solve problems, crunch numbers, everything that's kind of complicated. The limbic system is all about emotions. And the reptilian brain is in charge of our most basic instincts. It makes sure we're breathing, controls our sex drive and our fight or flight response. SUV is reptilian, is a completely a reptilian car, is survival and reproduction. I'm stronger, I'm bigger, I'm more powerful than you. I mean, if you come with a little car and I have a big SUV and we crash, you're going to die and I'm just going to have to clean a little bit my SUV. The media are projecting this image that the world has never been so dangerous. A 7.1 magnitude earthquake has hit Southern California's massive tropical cyclone. And triggered a tsunami. Militants have attacked the stock exchange building. Do you want to be in a small car when there is an earthquake around you? No, you want to be in an SUV that is completely independent, doesn't need the road. Building a car able to open new roads and possibilities is no longer impossible. SUVs appeal to our most basic instincts, and car makers target exactly those. But of course, SUV drivers would never admit that they're just following their primal urges. They give a more rational justification. If you look at surveys as to why people are buying SUVs, many will say, because they're safer. And yes, if you're in an SUV and you crash with another car, you're less likely to die. But SUVs have a pretty high center of gravity and that makes them prone to rolling over, which is actually really dangerous and also kind of obvious. They know the reality is that the higher you are, the more chance you have to roll over. It's more dangerous to have a... But doesn't matter. The reptilian brain, as I say that, feel bigger, stronger when you are on top. There might be something like an arms race. So by the time most cars get taller, imagine you're in a smaller car in traffic and you see all those higher cars, uh, taller cars, uh, then you might be incentivized to get a taller car too, just to fit right in and not be like intimidated by uh, other vehicles in traffic. People who drive SUVs want to feel safe, even if that means putting others at risk. 
The front bumpers of many SUVs, for example, are so high that pedestrians are more likely to suffer serious head or upper body injuries in a crash. So SUV drivers are gaining something here, at the expense of others. And that's not just the case for road safety. More and more SUVs uh, in the fleet, uh, which means you have much bigger engine than the small cars, and uh, therefore they are um, higher guzzlers, they are, they are also burning more, more fuel. And if they are burning more fuel, then uh, you have more CO2 emissions. The growing number of SUVs is in fact the second biggest cause for the rise in CO2 emissions since 2010, ahead of heavy industry and aviation. Emissions from other types of passenger vehicles actually went down over the same period. And all this is not really news to us. We know SUVs are bad for the environment. But it's just too easy for us to brush aside these concerns. Our cortex thinks about abstract and complicated things that lie way in the future, like climate change and how we can prevent it. Our emotional limbic system, however, is more of a live-in-the-moment kind of person. It likes how flashy that brand new SUV looks and wants to drive off in it, now. And this instant gratification will often outweigh the distant and abstract concerns like climate change. To tell me that the environment is going to be bad in 15, 20 years doesn't really connect with me. I might be dead in 15 years. So, you know, so, so we have to make people realize that what is happening today and what they can experience today has some consequences for them today. And people around the world are realizing that more and more. But that still doesn't stop more and more people from buying SUVs. Awareness will help up to a point. But beyond the point, you have to talk about hard economics. You have to talk about recovering the damages that, that uh, the bigger SUVs and the more polluting vehicles are causing to our health, causing to the climate. We really need a solution to this. We need to have all factors working in the same direction. So like more efficient engines, more electric vehicles, but also smaller cars uh, uh, and also shorter distances traveled. We are ambivalent creatures, aren't we? Capable of rational thinking and yet wired to like the very things that are bad for us. <laughs>